Hey guys, it's Chris. We're back on K97.5. I'm back with James from Daily Leafs Sports Trivia. And today we have some special 90s alternative rock and roll for you today. We have some Beck. Where it's at. Hey guys, it's Chris, and I'm back with James from Daily Use of Sports Tribute, and we're back for another Game of Thrones Season 7 slash The Dragon Raised by Wolves series right. Q&A. So we'll have questions, I believe, from both you know general Season 7 questions as well as The Dragon Raised by Wolves Part 3. I believe we got Patreon up first. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. I'm going to start with those guys again because they're so important to the day-to-day -day activities of your channel, you know. They really are. And very much appreciated. So I'm going to start with Mark Joseph, a.k.a. The Snow and Winterfield. The Snow and Winterfield. <clears throat> he says, my real Q&A. The reason he says real Q&A is because looks like at the beginning he's kind of giving you grief about the Panther season. Yeah, so far. yeah. Uh, I replied to Mark on that <laughs> one. I'm not, I'm not watching the NFL this year. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm holding high hope. I believe they're going to get it together and make a good yeah, push. They have to win out now. Yeah. I mean, because Atlanta, I mean. Atlanta's on fire. Of course, Atlanta, <clears throat> they will fall, fall apart in the middle of the season like they always do. So, I don't know. We'll see. Well, he's, Mark says, my real Q&A, do you think the show is going to get predictable now that they don't have George to copy from? I can already see the huge group of fan favorites squaring off against the White Walkers. Yeah, I think in a way it already has. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in... You know, some people hate that. Some people, you know, especially this show, only watchers don't really know the difference, uh, except for the things kind of we point out in some of these in these videos. They're they're pretty far off right now. I mean, you're going to have again the major plot points will be the same. The ending will be the same essentially. There'll be a, there'll be a lot of details that are different. I don't know how much wins of winter stuff they have. I'm I'm just, I know they have some of it. I'm sure they do because we saw in season six with Arya, for example, the Mercy chapter. I mean, she's that's that was the Winds of Winter thing. Oh, okay. Where she played, you know, Mercy as far as the Lady Crane assassination attempt. So does so, does George give him a skeleton to work with, basically? Yeah, from my understanding, you know, he now early on in the first, I believe, four seasons, he wrote several episodes. He was oh, involved okay. directly okay. with them with writing episodes. So, but then he kind of stepped away, and they have they have complete creative control. But he's been kind of away from them for the past couple seasons. So they're really on their own. You know, he's giving them the information he's got, the, the end game and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so, good deal. So they'll get to the same place, but it's going to be uh, in different ways. All right, cool. This is from James Grimshaw. Appreciate it, James. Thank you, James. It says, hey, Chris, not sure if this has already been answered, but do you think the Iron Bank of Bravos will be a hindrance in the next season for the Crown and the Lannisters? As it has been stated at various points in the books and the show, if the debtor or debtors fail to pay off their loan, the bank funds their enemies. Will this be a major issue in the upcoming season, do you think? Um, in the TV show, I'm not so sure if it's a big issue, but yes, I mean, they're going to back Danny now, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, they obviously they know what's going on in the whole world because they run it, essentially. So, I mean, Cersei, she's got nothing right now basically you know unless she has to keep up the facade that there's gold mines that are still producing yeah in Lannisport which are they're not they don't have anything but the Tyrells and the Tyrells are already now since she killed everybody with Danny so Tyrell money's gone yeah so God, Danny has it all right. and uh, obviously they're going to back her Cersei's fucked except for the possibility of Euron and and somebody may ask about that I don't know but I don't see Cersei ever marrying again. So I, I, they could team up or something in the, in the sense of trying to keep their power or as yeah. far as Cersei keeping her power, but she will not marry Euron and let him be some ruler or king over her. I can't see Regardless. That. No way. So I, I don't know. Euron may have a different storyline. Perhaps he goes to Old Town or whatever, but that's a whole different question, I guess. But the point being that, yeah, uh, in the books, I can see it being a bigger issue. I don't even know if we'll see... Essos anymore in the Iron Bank in the show. Okay. They, we may not even see it at all. They may mention it or something like that, but I don't see uh, I don't see Danny having a problem getting funds. No way. So. 
All right, next Patreon question comes from Hoss Griffin. Hoss, thank you, sir. Q&A, do you think House Frey will put Edmure, head of house, in an attempt to avoid conflict and align with North? I've heard that some of the Frey children are not as batshit crazy as Lord Frey. Even Jamie said his wife did care for him. Yeah, uh, th no question. I mean, you know, they're not nearly as crazy as, as, as he was. So Arya's taking care of that problem. So now the phrase can come back into the fray if they want to. Oh, I love it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's possible. I think you'll see Edmure back. Arya may help him out since he, you know, she's the one that took out Walter yeah. Frey. And so he was there in a dungeon, apparently. He wasn't supposed to be. So she could release him and he could take back River Run or whatever they want to do now, so... Yeah, I think, uh, I think, but as far as the remaining phrase, I guess, is, was the question. Yeah, I mean, they, they have to fall in line. What else they going to so. do? Yeah. I mean, they don't have any options. John's going to reach out to everybody and say, look, here's what's going on. Here's, here's what, here's your choices. <laughs> you know what I mean? You either live with us or try to live at least and forget all this old shit or die. I mean, this this That'd be so hard to do, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, that's basically their choices, so. Yeah, they don't have they don't have much of a, a choice in that matter. Now, unless they're you know they don't believe in fairy tales like White Walkers and you know, yeah. zombies. I wish you guys would have seen me watching the uh, Red Wedding. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh gosh, I was watching you watch it. <laughs> I wish we'd had a camera on. Um, okay, here's here's uh, a regular contributor on our Patreon questions, Layla Gig. Layla, she says watching. Dragon Raised by Wolves Part 3. Maybe there's some kind of marriage certificate documentation hidden inside of Leanna statue, and John will stab the statue and bring the truth to light? Uh, yeah, it's, it's possible. I mean, I, I don't know if that would be a place where there would be a marriage certificate. And northern weddings don't really have documented weddings that I'm aware of. A northern some wedding. kind of documentation. Yeah, there, maybe there could be. Ned maybe, maybe Ned did something and, and stashed it there, but... I don't know. I, I do think that Liana's statue or whatever's down in the crypts has to do with Liana. I don't. I don't necessarily agree. Like I said in part three, if there's anything Targaryen related in there, I would think it may be the harp right. because his armor was bashed up and people were grabbing the rubies and you know that fell off of it. I don't think there's any Targaryen stuff down there necessarily. I think it's the Stark side, the Liana side. You know, as far as whatever's down there, if that makes yeah. sense for for a parentage reveal in the books or to help at least give him that inclination to wonder that or something to that effect in the book. So I don't expect a dragon egg, for example, to be in Liana's crypt. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's just hard to say, you know, maybe there is something to that effect as far as them having a, they would have a Northern wedding. So you wouldn't need a, you know, a big, a big ceremony like you do with the faith of the seven. You wouldn't have to have a septum. You basically have somebody as a witness and you walk up to a tree. That's a Northern okay. wedding. So I don't know how that works as far as somebody would document that or whatever. Or perhaps, you know, John was born and was just legitimized. But if they were, I would say it would be a northern wedding because Liana was from the north and she would have wanted that versus, a, you know, a wedding of the seven. Okay. Like Rhaegar and the yeah. Targaryens followed. So uh, I would say it was probably, I don't know, they want, might want to keep that secret. I don't know. I don't know if they'd write that down. True. So I think that's where Hal and Reed and somebody like that comes into play. And of course, Bran. Yeah, Bran. <laughs> Bran can just, you know, go see the past. Um, next question from Richard Pickett says, If Arya sees Littlefinger, there's no way she lets him live. Agree or disagree? Both. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, no, uh, I, think, um, I think Arya will probably be the undoing of Littlefinger under Sansa's order. Okay. I think Littlefinger's gonna be around a little while to, to cause some strife between between John and Sansa. We already kind of see that already taking place a little bit, like planting the seeds of doubt in her head about can he rule or should he rule because he's the bastard and you're the legitimate Stark child. But when Arya gets there, yeah, he could play them against each other too, who knows. Well, going right along with the Littlefinger thing, Ashley B says, Will you be doing an in-game video for Littlefinger? He has always been plotting to be the one sitting on the Iron Throne. I don't see him stepping back and giving it all up once Danny's there. Keep up the awesome videos. 
passes the time until next year. Uh, I haven't thought about doing a little finger in game video only because I just think the end game is going to be simple. I think it's death via Sansa. And I don't think she literally swings a sword like I was just saying. Right. I think she will give the order and be his downfall because she's been his protege. I know. But and and it's she's learned that he's full of shit. There's a part of me that thinks she really digs him in a way. I really can't help but feel that way. Yeah, I mean he, you know, she owes him. You know, okay. she did. He did save her literally from King's Landing and pulled her out of there during the the Purple Wedding, and got her ass to safety. But at the same time, he did all that for personal gain. Right. So she's starting to see she's that now. Yeah. She's starting to see that now. And, you know, even though there will be, a, I'm assuming, going to be a little bit of conflict between her and John. And then, you know, like I said, if Arya gets there, you know, he'll he'll try to drive wedges wherever he can. Because, again, he, he he's basically, where he fucked up was he told Sansa what he wanted. Yeah, that's he true. That's very true. I want to sit on the throne with you beside me. And then again... Sansa, even in the books, is kind of you know kind of like that. She she's she's kind of the one that if anybody is a if you hate a Stark, it's Sansa, and they may, and he did that on purpose. You know he's the one who essentially betrayed the Stark family by trying to side with Joffrey for so long and all that kind of stuff. And now she's coming back around, but it's taken a while. She's still got a little bit of that in her, wanting to be this you know queen. Yeah, like she's always dreamt of being, you know, or whatever. So, like Ashley says now, um, she says I don't see him stepping back and giving it all up once Danny is there. How does Littlefinger interact with Danny if he makes it? You know. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Because he'll I suck up to her, I believe. I, I, yeah, he would try he's to. Kind of he would try to manipulate. He, he he's going to bet on the winner. You know, always. I mean? he, he's he he would he would abandon Sands in a heartbeat if it meant. Getting with Danny because obviously she's got the power, she's got the dragon, she's yep. got the the wealth. Yes. So uh, if it gets to that point, she he will definitely do something to try to jump on her side. As far as you know, she's going to be the next queen, and he'll he, whether he tries to somehow take that from her or not would would I, I, I can't see any way for him to do that. Mm -hmm. But if if it means he can't be king or whatever. He wants to retain a powerful position, obviously. Right. So, I, honestly, I don't think we'll ever get that far, though. Okay. I, don't, I don't think that he's going to make it that long. So, you might not have to do a video on So, him. I may not <laughs> have to do an in-game video on Littlefinger. I love Littlefinger. I do as far as, you know, a manipulator and a character. Because he's the one that basically caused all this shit. He started everything. He's All these little, you know, skirmishes between houses. And the whole thing with the, the Baratheons versus the Starks and the Lannisters versus... He did all that just to get all this started. And, and, and along with Varys a little bit too because Varys... Is, but Varys had a different end game. He's not power hungry himself. Right. He's doing it for Danny in the show or Aegon in the books or one of the Targaryens for a restoration starting all this in this strife. But Littlefinger's all about personal gain. So he'll get his. Yeah, usually those people in any story. Right. Don't end with Right. Um, next question, Ashley Smith says, question, so the White Walker touched the baby's cheek and it turned. Why was Bran only marked and didn't actually turn when the Night's King touched him? Do you think it's related to Stark heritage? It, it think, could be. It just I, I, think, I think it's just, yeah, because it was a vision, but at the same time, just a different type of magic. You know, he, you know, a baby... He went through this little ritual thing, kind of, sort of. Yeah, and he, he had the, the center of the. You know, this little, you know, the ice stone hinge and the ice table, and he picked it up, and that was the intent, right, of, yeah. to turn it. So I think it was just a different type of magic, and, and he kind of was just touching Bran to show him I can touch you. Exactly, he just grabbed Bran to mark him, so that was his intent. So oh, I think yeah, it was just, yeah. you know, now whether he would have held on to him and been able to kill him in a vision, we don't know, but I guess physically we he could have. You know, we it don't seem really to hurt Bran. Yeah, it scared the shit out of him for yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely scared him. He wasn't really sure that he got more until Blood Raven told him. So I, I'm just guessing it was just a different type of magic, you know, as far as, you know, the intention of what he was doing. I don't think it's just like a touch. Okay, All next right. question comes from George Sardiano. Sounds good. Thank you, George. It says, I don't think we should make the assumption that the Night King is ancient. There's nothing to say that Leaf didn't just create him in the more recent past. And that's why George R. R. Martin and D&D &D can say that he isn't the same as the old Night King and why they weren't around for years. What do you think? 
Well, I mean, that's that's possible, sure. But, the, you know, based off the history we know, you know, he is, he was created originally during the fight or the war between the children of the forest and the first men, okay. which was about 8,000 years ago. So, now, I'm not arguing at all that the history may be off as far as the number of years. It could have been 5,000 years or 4,000. You know how that goes in even real history. So, yeah. But from the little bit we do know is that they were created because they needed help. They couldn't fight men with their, you know, dragon glass weapons when men had bronze. Right. That was the whole idea for them to be their nuclear option because the men were cutting down their trees and invading their lands and blah, 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 pushing them back up north. So, I mean, I, I think it's probably, whether the years are off or not, I think it's accurate that he was the first Night King and then he created all the rest of them and of course they lost control of them. So, that's just my opinion. I don't think, uh, I don't know, unless you're looking at some kind of revenge angle, you know, for Leaf to create him recently, because we know they existed. We know the history of the Long Night. I mean, we, you have those legends. We know it was real. Yeah. So yeah, you would right. have two different occasions of two different, you know, Night Kings being created or something like that. That's Otherwise, you wouldn't have those legends of, you know, ice spiders as big as hounds. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward with that. Will we see an ice spider? In the show, yeah, I doubt when it. this penultimate, I think whatever I think happens, happens. looks because the old Nan, I mean, she knows it all, right? Yeah, but the, the, you know, the show and their CGI problems with Ghost and One One, I don't, I don't know if we'll do an ice spider in the show, but I do want to see an ice spider in the books at least. Well, I think people are digging your little individual videos on people and I hope subjects so. because here's another one. This is from Michelle Ferguson. It says. I'm going off subject on John. I would like to see a video on your take on Bran's endgame. The scenes at the Tower of Joy make me think Bran will go back and do something, or he has already. The first time he travels there with Blood Raven, he calls out Father and Ned turns. When Bran returns alone, he doesn't yell out, but Ned still stops and turns. Right. Seems like there's a reason we are seeing this. Because that, that had already happened. Right. By the time he went back the second time. So, in essence, it's always happened. So, right. So, he could visit it as many times as he wanted, and right. every single time, Ned would turn. Exactly. And, and in the books, it's a little bit different, so just to throw this out there, in the books, the Tower of Joy doesn't go down through Bran's eyes. We get it through dreams that Ned has, when he has a fever dream in King's Landing. So we don't get as much in the book as we do in the show with the oh, Tower of Joy. Okay. So there are a lot of differences there. Now, there is a similar scene with Bran when he first starts experiencing visions with Blood Raven as far as his Jedi training. Yeah. He, he goes to Winterfell. He's visiting through the Godswood at Winterfell, and he basically starts seeing, at one point he sees Ned praying to the Werewood tree in the Godswood at Winterfell. Right. And he says, Father. And Ned kind of looks up like, the wind blew or something. So they kind of mix. So they kind of mix those two together for the show. Ned's fever dreams, right, and Bran's vision, exactly. At God, so it went down a lot different than the books. Although a similar thing happened. So now, if you would go back and, for example, in the books, if you would revisit that scene, you would always see Ned looking up, like, "What the hell was that?" Wow. So now, essentially, that's always happened. But yeah, I, I mean, Bran's end game. I think. I think it ties into the rest, you know, I, the question is, is when all this is over, assuming he's still alive, you know, what does he do? Does he live a normal life at Winterfell with his family? You know, of course, you got a Godswood right there. He can tap into wherewood.net right there. Or does he have to go off and not be in society because of his power? You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's really the question for me is, obviously, he's got a big role in the end game as far as we, we kind of called him the the information guy, the coordinator, I think, in mm -hmm. a way, that's kind of the question. Does he just stay home now? Because technically, you know, he's the heir, being the male. Now, again, we're talking about a lot of change, how we're thinking this is probably going to change from a feudalistic type society to like more of a democracy yeah. style thing, or maybe even a republic, I don't know. So that's kind of the question is, how does that work if he does stay home? Is that... Uh, stark blood that has like blended out some of them went north of the wall um, and they have different pieces of that DNA yeah it, it's it's the way it's stated is is you know one in a thousand or something like that have warging ability or okay. have that special ability to ward or whatever or as far as or skin changing 
And a smaller and percentage then have green even sight? a smaller percentage, like one of a thousand wargs have green sight or something like that. Okay. So yeah, it's 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 such a small percentage of people, but it's it's definitely linked. And I, I said I talked about this a little bit in my old you know how did the Starks get their warging ability video. Okay. And it goes back to I think an event that's in the world of ice and fire, and that is. Um, the War King, which was a guy who was a, it was kind of a, a group of first men, I mm -hmm. guess you say. This is, you know, way back in history before, before uh, the stuff we know. And there were the Kings of Winter, the, the Starks had been founded at that point, and they fought a battle over an area called Sea Dragon Point. Okay. And the Starks won and killed all the males, put all the children, male children, to the sword, killed the War King, but took their daughters. Okay. So I think that's the point where they had already been with the children of the forest and intermingling that yep. group of people. So I think that was the first people to get that in their DNA, the ability to, to warg and bring cool. sight and all that. So that set up the ice side of things, right? Yeah. So the Starks beat all them, killed them all, took the children, took the females, married them. I'm sure there was some other bad shit going on back in the, those days, right? Even the Starks wasn't all perfect back in the days when they were kings of, course, of winter. Of so anyway, the point being, I think that's the point that that DNA entered the Stark blood. And so, uh, otherwise, why do we have that story in the world of ice and fire? Now, like you just said, a lot of people say, well, there's wildlings north of the wall that have working ability. Sure. But I mean, you don't know, you know, there's, there could have been, you know, leftovers from that group that they didn't know about, you know, but that's where it came from. It came from the children of the forest mixing DNA with humans at some point. And we can assume that there are people walking around who don't realize they have those powers. Yeah, I mean, because it takes something to unlock those powers. You know, like it... The way John resists his warging abilities and stuff. Right, he, res they don't he resists in the book. Some people may not understand what the hell it is. Some yeah. people may never get beyond the dream state because it starts as dreams. But you have to have something you're close with, like a dire wolf, to start that unlocking process. Well, I'm, I'm saying all that to lead up to this. Is there a possibility of a new character coming into play? Or are we stuck with the characters we have and maybe we get to see some from the past like Rhaegar? There is a possibility we're going to see Rhaegar, right? Yeah, I hope so. I, I think that this year we should see, I hope at least, that we see at least the turning of Hall. I which was the catalyst that. to this whole damn thing. The whole thing. That didn't actually start it. That was more the catalyst when he chose Liana over his, over his wife, wife and gave her the blue winter roses and all that. So I hope we see that to establish, because, you know, in season five especially, they talked Rhaegar up so much. You know, Barrys and Selmy was with Danny. Yeah. And he was talking about how great of a singer he was. Yes. He loved singing, hated yeah. killing. So they played him as, as a really good guy. Good guy, yeah. As opposed to this monster that Robert Baratheon thought he was. So... With that said, I think that Bran needs to kind of go back, at least for show watchers yeah. that doesn't haven't read the books, to show the turning of Heron Hall and how they met, fell in love, and all that kind of stuff, and perhaps his obsession with prophecy because he was obsessed with prophecy as far as the prince that was promised, you know, Azor High, whatever you want to call it. So, and he, they need to establish that he was a good guy that it wasn't kidnapping she went willingly with him and all that type of stuff so i hope so we at least see the any new on. characters that we may see will actually be rehashed characters from the books uh i, I would think so no, I, I no new big player gonna show up i don't, in this story I don't think so no i mean i, I couldn't imagine and you got two books left and right. you know the you know, the I, I can't see any big new major players even in the books okay and i mean i think we're getting to a point now especially in the I show think, yeah they're wrapping it up yeah they're kind of wrapping it up or getting to or setting up the end game at least and the books it's certainly possible because he can change his mind and rewrite and whatever he wants but you know, I think he's realized this was supposed to be a trilogy. So I think that, uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to introduce too many more big storylines. <laughs> oh, run out of time, George. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, guys, well, that will do it for this Q&A. And uh, we will uh, probably, like James just said, do another q and I'm assuming probably next week. Mm -hmm. um, I'll continue to have solo videos out. I have The Walking Dead now as well. And, of course, Westworld on top of each other the same night. So this is getting hard Yeah. to kind of keep up. But, uh, we're, yeah, we'll definitely do another Game of Thrones q and I'm sure I'll have a couple of Game of Thrones solo vids as well. And uh, we'll do the giveaway, the next giveaway as well, 
next Q&A. Awesome. And it's I'm gonna, really looking forward to this. Yeah, so we'll, we'll announce that and how to enter and all that good stuff then. But uh, anyway, guys, we'll leave it there for now. So uh, as usual, thank you for all the support. And a uh, big thank you to all my Patreons. I just shouted you guys out in the last spoilers video I did. So uh, be sure to check that out if you hadn't, if you're interested in spoilers for Season 7. Or potential spoilers, just basically some speculation on pictures. But uh, anyway, as usual, thank you for all the support. Be sure to subscribe and get everything. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. That was a good drum break. Pick yourself up off the side of the road with the elevator bones and your whip flashes hones. Members only hypnotizes.